So it is often confusing to understand the difference between a cloud engineer versus a DevOps engineer. So I've invited two IT professionals at our Claydesk home office, of course. One is a cloud engineer and the other one is a DevOps engineer. Let's see what the key difference are between the two roles so you can understand as to which role is best for you. So without further ado, let's welcome these two IT professionals and they'll tell you what the roles are about a cloud engineer and a DevOps engineer. Hi, I'm a cloud engineer and I'm here to tell you nine things about this role. Number one, cloud engineer is an IT professional who's responsible for creating and maintaining cloud infrastructure and platform for individuals or enterprise organizations. Number two, a cloud engineer is mainly responsible for various technical responsibilities under cloud computing. Number three, the key focus of a cloud engineer is on cloud infrastructure and operations. Number four, the engineer is considered as a subset of DevOps engineer. Number five, the job growth in case of cloud engineer is comparatively less than that of a DevOps engineer. Number six, the cloud engineer comparatively less salary, right, as compared to DevOps. Number seven, the software lifecycle understanding of a cloud engineer is less than the DevOps engineer. Next, the methodology SDLC or Agile is partially followed. And number nine, engineers create brainstorm cloud solutions and that is the strength that I have as a cloud engineer. Hi, I'm a DevOps engineer and I'm here to tell you nine things about the DevOps role. Number one, a DevOps engineer is an IT professional who's responsible for bridging software development, engineering, and of course, management operations to make software development faster. Number two, a DevOps engineer is mainly responsible for various development and operational applications. And number three, the key focus of a DevOps engineer is on development, operations, and then quality assurance. Number four, a DevOps engineer is considered as a superset of a cloud engineer. Number five, the job growth in case of DevOps engineer is higher than that of a cloud engineer. Number six, the salary of DevOps engineer is comparatively higher, much higher as compared to a cloud engineer. And number seven, software lifecycle understanding of DevOps engineers are more than the cloud engineers. And number eight, the SDLC or Agile methodology is diligently followed. And number nine, a DevOps engineer find ways to make automation effective. A few words on the basic roles and responsibilities on both. The engineers create remote networks that companies use to share data, conduct big data, store backup data, and even test and develop applications. The cloud architecture is that the build is large enough to handle multiple users, to handle massive data sets. The first step for a cloud engineer is to study a company's business plan, create a system that fits the needs, right? So they can converse with you know, individuals to determine system requirements, including what the cloud platform will be used, AWS, GCP, or whatever. This allows them to develop a roadmap to design roadmap using AWS, for example. Then they can execute the design by building the entire cloud infrastructure and the responsibilities of a cloud engineer includes you know, creating cloud solutions, compatibility across Windows, Linux, iOS, and other systems. Three is protecting organizations for implementing security, aligning to the company's goals. They also implement the entire infrastructure and protect the infrastructure. The DevOps engineers, on the other hand, they are responsible for creating pipelines and automation, right? This typically involves creating custom automation tools, standardizing technologies, and improving operational efficiency. So as Agile team members, their goal is to speed up the processes involved in creating and delivering software. Now this covers extensive responsibilities, including tracking design bugs, automating debugging processes for developers. In terms of efficiency, DevOps engineers may document also standardized procedures, right? Build and maintain configuration, deployment frameworks, and also create best practices 
for standards. So the responsibilities quickly for DevOps engineer, finding new opportunities for automation, right? Two, utilizing automated configuration tools like Chef, Puppet, and other tools. Maintaining and deploying web-based applications, creating the entire pipeline, maintaining security, right? And of course, maintaining performance for business outcomes. So I hope you guys like the differences, the nine differences between a cloud engineer and the roles and responsibilities versus a DevOps engineer. Now, no two roles are, of course, the same, and it's not really which one is better and which one you should pursue. Rather, I think in my own experience, in all practicality, uh, being in the industry for all these years, it's really the aptitude. So if you are more of a desk person, if you're more of a computer person, for example, uh, in other words, you like, enjoy, you know, working in front of servers, then a cloud engineer would be better suited because then you'll be dealing with infrastructure, you'll be dealing with the design aspects of the infrastructure, and so forth, right? Whereas if you are a DevOps engineer, in other words, well, let's say you like development, right? You like operations, and that's what DevOps really is all about. It's really a culture uh, or, or a shift in mindset. So you'll be dealing with developers, and you'll be dealing with the network engineers or the operations team. So if you are more of a person who knows, who enjoys programming, who enjoys shell scripting, for example, or at the same time, you also understand the network engineering aspects of a cloud network. So if you're, for example, within the AWS ecosystem, then you're comfortable with all these tools and services, of course, of building pipelines and automating. Yet at the same time, you're also you know, keeping a close eye on how developers are committing their code, how efficient the code is, and so on. And not only that, the third aspect is, of course, is QA, which is quality assurance or you know, the testing element that runs uh, for the entire pipeline. So unit tests, um, you need to be able to know how to conduct those or at least know how they're done, right? Because as a DevOps engineer, you're more of um, a management uh, technical, you know, and, and people person too, because you ought to be, you know, working with all these teams, conducting meetings, and make sure that the entire pipeline stays smooth, right, from the dev all the way to the client, including operations and testing. So definitely more responsibilities, and that's probably why there's more, um, you know, the salary packages are different for DevOps engineers as, uh, as compared to cloud engineers. But it's really the aptitude. So I would ask myself this you know, question, well, what do I want to do? So if you are a beginner, um, for example, if you want to get into this field, yeah, I think cloud engineer would be an easy way entry point into the cloud world. Now, be it Amazon, AWS, for example, or it could be Microsoft Azure, it could be IBM Cloud or Red Hat Linux, you know, if you're working with those. So it's really, um, think about it, Amazon, it's sort of like, uh, I, I always recommend AWS. The reason being because AWS works on a simple, simple uh, philosophy, right? It's easy to use. And of course, we like what's easy to use. Whereas Microsoft, um, if you've been in the Microsoft field, I've been with Microsoft since early 90s, right? When there was NT and I was working with NT4 or whatever, yeah, that was way long ago. And I was configuring and setting up servers and whatnot. So, uh, of course, my journey way back then started with Microsoft. But AWS is so like is much easier. So when I when some student asks me, uh, you know, a lot of you comment in the questions as to which area to get into first or how, um, I definitely recommend um, and I always talk about AWS. It's a, you know, just open up a free tier account, jump right in. Uh, go through our lectures. And I'm going to show you all these courses that we have on our YouTube channel. These are free. Of course, YouTube is free. You can take a look at those. And right here on our, I have hundreds and hundreds of courses. I've been doing this for a long, long time, guys, right? So for example, if you are a newbie and you want to get into AWS and our AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner updated 2021 course, uh, and we regularly update our courses, is right here, right? So it's a full three, four hour course. You can also take the IP subnetting course if you want to get into the networking area. That's about, you know, almost hour and a half and course in length. And then we have, of course, somewhere in here, the Solutions Architect, the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate course, full seven hours. 
yeah, Python course for seven hours. So all these full courses I have in AWS recognition with Python and so on. The latest course we uploaded was Figma web design. So the goal of our channel here, of course, is to provide you uh, free courses. Now, sometimes, yeah, free courses, it's okay. YouTube is all right. But if you want uh, some serious learning and if you're really thinking of career change, then yeah, definitely go to claydesk.com. This is our own um, e-campus. We have all these courses, right? Whether it's you know Terraform and full four hours, six hours, 12 hours, 22 hours as DevOps engineer, you can take a look at those. And it's really you know cost effective. So uh, because with one small fee, you'll be actually getting access to all these courses. So hundreds and hundreds of courses for just uh, this. So you can pursue the entire certification path uh, through our website, right? We have all these courses. So and you can, of course, uh, dedicate yourself to learning without any interruptions, right? Like we, YouTube, we have a little bit of interruptions, right? So yeah, I uh, just wanted to um, cover and let you know that we um, are, are super happy and we regularly update our courses so that um, your career can grow if you're already into the field or if you are a newbie perfect that'd be awesome so with that thanks so much for watching i hope you guys like it and of course i'll be continuing to making videos make sure you like comment and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified every single time we upload a new full course or a tutorial that really really gives you hands-on real world expertise so thanks so much. My name is Syed and I'll see you guys next time.